In this video, we're going to do a few exercises with lists. So first one, given a list, we want to compute the summation of all its elements. So the list is expected to only contain numbers. And we are supposed to return uh, the summation of all of it. Given that when the list is empty, you should return zero. So let's uh, create a new file. It. Okay, and now I'm going to do a function uh, definition. I'm going to write some lists. Okay, so now what do we do? We want to write a recursive algorithm, right? Because we have no way of iterating. But what we want to do is somehow compute the summation of all the elements in the list. So usually, how does this work? It's a basic recursive algorithm. What we're going to do is we're going to write a test to check whether the list is empty or not lit empty. And if it is empty, you're done. You're at this case. This is the base case. And then the recursive case is when the list has at least one element. So we're going to write uh, two cases. Right, and first is when the list is empty. We can test if the list is empty by writing empty question mark. And if the list is empty, we know that we should return zero because that's the summation of an empty list. And otherwise, we write else. What do we do? Well, we can use the the two functions, and that's you will see uh, in basically all recursive algorithms that operate on lists. You're going to use first, and you're going to use rest. So first we'll give me the first element of the list, and if the list is not empty, then we reach this branch. So at this branch, we already know that the list has at least one element. So what we're going to do is we're going to add, right, because we need to do the addition of the first element of the list, right? And then what we do, we're going to use a recursive call, and we're going to send the list. We can send the same list because otherwise we would have an endless loop, right? The list always has to get smaller in the recursive call. So the recursive call is going to be the rest of the list, right? Because if you recall, if you have a list like one, two, three, four, oops, this can't seem to find the L. Okay. First of L and rest of L. Okay, so first let me show let me recall or remind everyone what first and, and last do. First and rest do. Racket. So if the list is one, two, three, four, first is gonna be one and rest is gonna be two, three, four. Right? And you already know that if I do rest of an empty list, I get an error. Right, so this is the error that you get in trying to call an empty list. So I don't want that. I'm gonna comment this out in this as well. Okay, so let's go back. So, what am I gonna do? This is summation, right? So we always have to think what we do with the first element, and then what we do with the rest. And the rest we were gonna do always at the recursive call. So this. By doing the recursive call of the rest, the magic of recursion tells me that I get the summation of the rest of the list. Um, and now what do I do with the, the first element? I just add it. I just add these two things together and magically I should get the summation. So now let me run this again and the test passed. So let's just do a mistake just to see that everything is fine. If I do do minus instead of plus, I should get the negative number. Okay, see, got an error. So instead, let me show you that it actually works and everything is fine. Okay, so I showed you how to write a recursive function that we can use condition to test whether the list is empty or not. When it's empty, 
you should handle the base case, which is basically you should think, what does this function do when the list, or does, sorry, what does the function does when the list is empty? And then the other case, you should always do the recursive, uh, you should always consider the recursive call of the rest of the list, and you should do something with the first element of the list. And in this case, because it's summation, we know that we would get the summation of the rest of the list plus the first element. So now let's look at the next example. So this is just the end where I show you the whole code. Here I'm using car and CDR, but I actually do not like this. I'll, I'll update the slide so that it shows first and rest. Okay, so next example, when you return a list that goes all the way down uh, to zero, to one. So the countdown of zero is empty list, and if you do three, it goes three, two, one. So let's write, copy these two tests. So count down, and we have a number. Let me just add a bit of uh, vertical space. Okay. So we're writing a function definition, so we put parentheses around, and we put our parameter, which is going to be n, the number. What are we going to do? Okay, so in this case, the this is a function. We need to repeat it, right? It needs to be recursive uh, because it grows on the input. And what we need to do, what is getting smaller? It has to be n, right? It's the only parameter we have. So what we're going to do, we have here the base case, right? So the base case is when uh, n is at least 0, right? So that's going to be the base case. So cond when n is... Um, smaller or equal than zero then we're going to do something otherwise we're going to do something else okay so what do we do when n is zero well as you can see here we should return the empty list otherwise what do we do well we're going to need to create a new list right because we're returning a list where we're going to add an element always to the left, right? So in this case, if we did three, what we did, what we are returning is, let's try to figure out how the code works. So if we have this, what we're doing is, oops, count. Countdown of three becomes a list of this. So countdown of 2 should be 2, 1. Countdown of 1 should be list 1. And count down of 0 should be list 1. Right? So this is more or less how it should work. So now let's try to let's try to write the return value in terms of um, the recursive call. So what we see here is notice that we have list 2, 1. So you can think of this as cons of 3 and then 2, 1, right? Because we learned that uh, you can add an element to the left-hand side of a list by using cons. So similarly, we could write list of 2, 1 as cons of 2, list 1. Right, so you could also similarly write cons of 1 list. And this is the base case. Right? So, we can also now simplify this and try to find the recursive step. So what we do is cons of 3. Right? And here we can see that this is the value below. Okay, so we can rewrite this to become cons of 3 countdown of 2. Right? So now I'm going to do the same thing in all the recursive steps.
And now it makes sense, right? Because the empty list is countdown of zero. So now we re rewrite everything. And now we can see, if we were to generalize this, count down of n now becomes count cons of n countdown of n minus one right let's see if it makes sense so countdown of three is cons of three countdown of three minus one which is two countdown of two is cons of two countdown of two minus one which is one countdown of one is cons of one countdown of one minus one which is zero so Right? Because in the recursive call, we always have to make our value smaller, and with numbers is by decrementing them usually. So, let's see if this works. And it works. Okay, I hope this example gave you an idea or another way to look at how we write re or derive a recursive algorithm. So now we're going to do our third example, which is a bit bigger. Let's see if this is easy. Okay, it's the same as what we did. Okay, so this is an interesting example for me, which combines lists and pairs. Uh, so I like it because of that. It gives you a use, a use of, of pairs. Example three. Okay, so what we are writing is the function zip, which basically combines the first element of each list together, and then the second element of each list together, and the third element of each list together. So if you do zip of these two lists, what you get is a list of pairs. So given two lists, you return a list of pairs. Right, so the first pair will, will get the first element of each list. Second pair will get the second element of each list third element will get the third element of each list and then when you have uh, one if one of the arguments being passed to the list is smaller than the other like in this case where you have more elements you get the intersection between them right so it's the same as just you, you discard the others right so the result we're going to be a list with three pairs because the smallest list has three elements that's it so now let's try to write that okay so this this um, algorithm now we're going to be doing recursion and we have two elements but we know that we should make them smaller one by one why because um, we're pairing each combining every element of each list. So both lists have to become smaller as the recursive call advances. So first thing we need to know is what are base what are our base cases? And then what is our recursive step? So what are our base cases? Let's think about it. What could happen is that the left hand side list, sorry, the left hand side list could be empty. And in that case, what we've learned is that, oops, it doesn't matter how many elements there are. If one is smaller than the other, then the resulting, the result of zip is going to be um, a list with the si same size as the smallest list. So if the left-hand side is empty, then it means the result has to be empty. But you have to take into account what happens if the right hand side is empty so in that case we have to do something similar so if the right hand side is empty we also return an empty list last case is well neither list is empty so this one has at least one and this one has at least one so what would be the recursive case so otherwise we were finally in the recursive step 
So the recursive step for zip is going to be rest of L and rest of R. Right? Okay, so now what do we do? So we know that by doing the recursive call, by the magic of recursion, what we get is a list of pairs. Right? So what we want to do now is add one element. It's going to be a pair of the first of the last and first of the right. So let's create that. We can create a temporary definition here. I'm going to say f, f for first, or fst. Okay, so the first element of the new list is going to be a pair. So we're going to do cons, right? It's going to have something on the left, something on the right. And this is a simple definition. Okay, what are we going to put on the left? Let's put the first element of each list. So let's do first of L and then first of R. Okay, so my first of the resulting list is going to be a pair. Okay, but this is a list itself. So what should we return? We need to add this new pair. Let's call it new pair. Right? Which is the pair of the first elements of each list to the resulting list. First, let's, let's ignore that. Let's see what happens if I didn't do that, if I ignored, discarded that element. Then what would happen? What would happen is that I would get always an empty list, right? Because I'm never adding. In the base case, I have an empty list. And in the recursive call, I don't do anything to that list, right? For the list to be something other than, than empty, I need to add something to it. So what I'm adding is going to be the new pair. And finally, everything works. Okay, so I hope that this made sense. So when this is new, we hadn't seen this before. Conditionals, you can actually define, uh, you can have definitions inside of it, and you can have nested definitions inside functions as well. Because as we've seen, we, this we did see before, but we didn't see examples of it. In a lambda, we see we saw actually in the syntactic definite, in the grammar of how, what a lambda could be, uh, we saw that it was terms, and it had to be at least one term. And a term is a definition. So you can have definitions inside lambdas, and because um, a function definition is implicitly a lambda, then it means we can have uh, also terms in ter inside of conditionals, which is interesting. Okay, so now this works, and this is the third example. And here I just abstract the way uh, cons as adding an element to a list and the pair is just cons so this is just adding some more natural nomenclature okay um, and that's it i hope you enjoy these examples